So for this video, I'm going to take you through the stomach and the actions that happen in there in digesting food. <clears throat> so as we see here, we have the stomach <clears throat> that has a slight hook to it, almost like a banana. Um, and you have the esophagus up here, and then you have what's called the duodenum, which is the start of the small intestine. The regions of the stomach, you have the cardia or ca cardiac region, you have what's called the fundus, the body, and the pylorus. Okay, um, Two main structures that we have on here are what are called sphincters, and a sphincter is a circular muscle that uh, stays closed until food has to really pass through it. Um, so our first one is what's called the gastroesophageal sphincter, and that can be found right here. And when that fails to stay closed, uh, food is or, or stomach acid is allowed to come back up into your esophagus, and that's what we call heartburn, or sometimes called acid reflux, and that causes a burning sens sensation because the hydrochloric acid from the stomach uh, is burning the cells of the esophagus. So when food comes down, it's supposed to open, and then it's supposed to close on itself again, but sometimes that does not happen. At the other end, we have what's called the pyloric sphincter, which is here, and that separates the stomach from the uh, start of the intestines, and that pyloric sphincter's job is to open when the food has, one, been totally digested by the stomach, and two, there is room in the duodenum. And sometimes the food empties out of the duodenum faster than others because of whatever is in the food that we eat. So very fatty foods um, tend to stay in the duodenum for longer because they need to be broken down um, for longer lengths of time. When we look at the <clears throat> internal structures of the stomach, uh, first off we have a very, very strong muscular layer and you can see all the different directions that the muscles are in. So that gives the ability for the stomach to really turn um, turn the food over and pulverize the food in there as well as using uh, chemicals and enzymes in there. Inside we have what is called rugi or sometimes called rugi and that allows for expansion of the stomach so when you eat food uh, the stomach will be able to um, enlarge in size to maintain all the food that you are consuming and also be able to move it around so then the uh, enzymes and the chemicals can go to work. Uh, lastly on this slide you have what's called your lesser curvature which is here and you have your greater curvature which is the outer part of your stomach. Now inside the stomach uh, you have what are called simple columnar cells because their job is to um, secrete and they do a little bit of absorption but not too much and they secrete um, a lot of different enzymes and chemicals uh, and also a bicarbonate um, mucus or solution and that's so that the stomach acid does not burn through the stomach wall. Now if we look over here we have uh, what are called chief cells, parietal cells, and enteroendocrine cells. And the enteroendocrine cells work with your endocrine system. So they will release hormones um, to speed up digestion. If we look at the chief cells and the parietal cells, they produce, uh, well, chief cells produce pepsinogens and parietal cells produce uh, hydrochloric acid. And those two um, pepsinogens and hydrochloric acid are going to work together to produce something that's called pepsin. And I'll just briefly ex uh, explain that on the next slide. Okay, When your food is completely digested, it moves out of the small intestine uh, in a liquid form called chyme. And that moves into your small intestine for further uh, digestion. So here we see a close-up look of the stomach wall. Okay, And you have what are called these gastric pits. And in there you have all these different cell types like we just explained. We have chief cells, we have parietal cells, and we also have those enteroendocrine cells. And you can see here, uh, if we take pepsinogen and we add that to hydrochloric acid, that produces pepsin. And pepsin, right here, is what is the main functioning unit to digest protein. And protein we have in a lot of our 
um, food such as like chicken and egg and stuff like that. So uh, just a review of some of these other things, you have what's called gastrin. That's a hormone from that enteroendocrine cell that increases stomach production. Gastrin is our main hormone that we will uh, talk about in this class. We have hydrochloric acid that uh, turns pepsinogen into pepsin to break down that protein. And we also produce uh, what's called renin. It's an enzyme that digests milk protein. Um, renin is similar to uh, what's called rennet, which is a solution that's actually used in making cheese and curdling cheese um, for cheesemakers. Okay, lastly, <clears throat> your stomach does minimal absorption, has a little bit of absorption of water, and two other things that um, we kind of see being absorbed there is aspirin and alcohol. Um, anything that's not absorbed in the stomach moves its way through the small intestine where the majority of absorption does take place. As it says, it takes about four hours to empty the stomach of food and six hours if there's fatty meals. And this is what I was talking about before, where your duodenum, the start of the small intestine, um, sometimes will take longer because we're not going to move food uh, along into the deeper parts of the small intestine without having them fully digested. Okay, hopefully this um, helps you understand what's going on in the stomach and we will uh, look at the small intestine in a future video.